This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory, and in this video we're going to work through part two of our Objective 3.2 practice tasks for the Microsoft Office Specialist 2016 Study Guide for Microsoft Excel Expert Exam. Let's get started. So in this task, we've moved on to our Parts tab in our worksheet, and we are going to be required to add a, an index and match formulas in order to get the right answer here for us. So of all the uh, formulas that we've gone through today, this is probably the most complicated one and, and maybe the one that uh, that you'll have the most challenge in understanding. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through it in a staged format just so that you're clear how th the pieces work. So what we're going to start off with is what, what happens in an index is we're going to give Excel two values which tell it how far down and across in order to return a specific reference. And in order to do that, we're going to have to use two match formulas because we're basing this on a variable. In this case, the variable is going to be here in column B in row 1, the part number. So let's start off with a match formula for this value. So we'll start with our match formula. Okay, and with the match syntax, there's going to be a lookup value. And in that case, that's going to be here in cell B1. Okay, so I'll just click on that, and I'm going to make that an absolute reference. Okay, the next is the lookup array. And so this is the range on the worksheet or within the workbook that Excel is going to try and find this value in. Uh, in this case, it's going to be looking in column H of this table down here. So I'm going to highlight this range here from h7 to h14, I'm going to use f4 to make that an absolute reference. Next is the match type. So if we enter a 1 here, it's going to return the largest value that's less than or equal to the lookup value, which is how our uh, VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP formulas, that true false at the end, worked. Um, if we enter a 0, it's going to return an exact match. And if we add a minus 1, it's going to do the opposite it's going to return the smallest value that is less than, that is, excuse me, that is greater than or equal to the lookup value. In this case, it's going to be an exact match. Um, and since we're looking up text, exact is really the only way that the function will work for us. But we can hit a zero here and uh, just to confirm that we're doing that on purpose. So let's hit enter. And what we're receiving is the fact that this is a uh, text response. So I've just changed my number formatting uh, to show us that it is a 1. So let's think about it. So Excel's trying to find D178 in this column over here. And, and when we look in this column, in this range, sure enough, D178 is the first value. Let's test this out and put in uh, this one here. So sure enough, that is now changed to 4. So just to make this a little more clear and easy for us, I'm going to copy this. and we will put it in the column next to it. I'm going to add an apostrophe, which is going to tell Excel to treat this as text rather than as a formula, and paste that in. So now we have our value of 4 being returned, and we can see what the formula we use to get that result is. All right, let's try it for the next one now. So in this case, we're going to do another match formula. Now this time our lookup value is going to be again in the column to the left here in cell B2. We'll F4 that to lock it in. Now in this case our lookup range is going to be from in row 6 from cells A or excuse me from column A through to column H at the end. So we'll highlight this. Again I'm going to F4 in order to make that an absolute reference. And we'll make this a 0 so that it's an exact match. We'll hit Enter. And I'm going to change the formatting here so that it is a number rather than the general comment. Let's copy this formula so we know what's here. We'll use our apostrophe and then paste in the values. All right. So what we're finding here is with description, Excel is looking at this value and checking this range here 
and saying, okay, well, description is the second column uh, in that range. And so that's why we have a number two. If we were to change that value to total cost, I'd expect to see instead of a two, we'd have one, two, three, four, five in that value. So let's try it out and see if our assumption is correct. Total cost, and we have a five here as a value. All right, so now we are going to use an index function. Okay, so let's start off with our index. I'm going to tab to bring that in. So the first thing it's asking for is an array. Okay, and so an array is effectively going to be our, our range that Excel is going to try and coordinate these two values here. Uh, and so what we're going to use as the array is this section down here. Okay, so from A7 all the way through to H14. Out of habit, I'm going to make that an absolute reference. Next, we need the row number. Okay, so that's how many rows down from the, the top row that Excel is going to look. And so our row value is going to be this formula here. So for, for example, for B111, we want the fourth row. So it would go one, two, three, down to four. Sure enough, there's B111. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in the same formula that we have right here. Okay, that's one reason I wanted to have it there so that I could see it. And so after that comma, we can just start with a new formula. In fact, there it's highlighted and we can auto-complete it just by hitting tab. And then we'll add the same values as before. So we'll go B1. I'll lock that in. Our column H7 through H14. Here's H7 through H14. And then 0 at the end. So this, again, in our index function, we have the array. We have the row number. Now, in this case, we also need the column number. And so that's going to be provided from our second match formula. All right, so we've integrated our match, our second match formula into this. We're going to use cell B2 as our lookup value. And our lookup array is going to be this row here, A6 through H6. We'll F4 to make that locked and then zero for an exact match at the end. Now let's hit enter and see if we get the result that we expect. So what happened there is I missed a second parenthesis at the end. And so Excel popped up a message box saying, hey, we understand what you're trying to do, but we found a little mistake. Would you like us to correct it? In that case, I was comfortable that I had the formula correct and hit enter. And so sure enough, what it's done is it's added that last uh, parenthesis at the end. All right, so what this has returned for us is a value, and the value of 131064. Now we can check this out by looking at, we want the total cost for part B11. So we'll go across the columns here, there's total cost, and we're going to go down to B111. Sure enough, there's 131064. Let's do a quick test here. Instead of, for that part number, instead of total cost, let's grab its description. I can do it from the drop down arrow there. Select description. I can see now what's happened is that now it wants column two, and it says part B111. Its description is that it's a sonotube. Sure enough, it's a sonotube. One last test. Let's change our part number to um, A182. This is telling me that it is row 7 for that value, and its description is S-joint. And I can confirm that by looking at the table. Now, normally in this case, once we know that we have this index function working, we wouldn't need to keep this, so we can delete that so it's not cluttering up our worksheet. But we have a much better understanding of how the function worked. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your time. I'd be honored if you would give this video a thumbs up or even better, a subscribe. I enjoy doing them. I hope that you uh, are, are learning something and feeling more confident going into your exam. This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory. Thanks for watching.